This is Laundry, and you're listening to As the Story Grows. Welcome to the next chapter of As the Story Grows. I'm Brad Patton. This week, we welcome Eugene, Oregon, indie rock band Laundry to the podcast. Laundry released their latest record, Movie Star, independently back in September. The band's entire discography is on Bandcamp. A link is in the show notes. Go check them out. Laundry discusses their origins, their musical evolution, and where they see the future of their sound headed, and the themes on Movie Star. I'm super excited to introduce you guys to Laundry. Enjoy. Hot. It's hot. Hot? Hot Oregon. Relatively. I don't know where you're from, so maybe we're talking out of our asses a little bit. <laughs> I'm in DC, so it's also hot, but I don't know the comparables. Yeah. I mean, if it's Probably usually it's cool, so I don't... Yeah. Similar longitude or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to have you guys on. I've been jamming some tunes and the new single, and uh, excited to chat. Thanks. Thanks for listening to it. Yeah. So if you guys want to start, if you just want to go around in however, whichever order you'd like and introduce yourself and what you do in the band. Yeah, for sure. Um, I am Riley Summers, R-I-L-E-Y-S-O-M-E-R-S. Uh, I play guitar and sing sometimes. Hi. Um, my name is Kiki. Should, do you want me to spell my name? Is you do that- not have to. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, my name is really long. Um, my last one. I'm Kiki Prasi Narce. Um, and... I play guitar and I also sing sometimes. I'm Cal, I play bass and sing sometimes. I'm Nick, I play drums and I'm just going to start out singing. Awesome, awesome. And you have a sweet mustache. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's great. I appreciate people who can rock it and have confidence and not look like creepy um so uh, <laughs> very important actually yeah, we, it we is very important fine line with a mustache for i sure. cannot do it so <laughs> awesome awesome well are you all from oregon and that eugene area originally i'm from portland we're mostly from portland riley's from uh klamath falls yeah i'm from uh, vancouver washington so just right next to portland on the washington side yeah and i'm from just from like southern oregon so like as far from portland as you can go and still be <laughs> Or basically that's awesome what brought you all out to eugene school cool yeah yeah, cool. yeah. we all met at U of O. nice yeah awesome what got each of you into music um well my parents are both musicians i mean my mom not really professionally anymore but they met in a band that they were playing together she's a really good flautist and my dad's a guitar player and nice. is an audio engineer now um and he records us yeah. Right. And so I was just around it all the time and it was kind of just I love I loved it from a really young age and so it just sort of was natural. Uh me and Kiki were in different bands in high school in Portland and we played with each other. Um and I think basically we both liked the attention a lot, right? <laughs> I didn't like it back then. I just like playing music, but now I do. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, you can go next if you want. Um, I was, uh, I don't know, I was just always kind of interested in it. Neither of my parents are musicians or anything, um, but my dad liked a lot of classic rock. He, I, I don't know, I like, I think maybe the start of it was sort of like Guitar Hero and um, sort of 
he gave me like I, I like won a CD for selling the most, or sorry, a CD player for selling the most raffle tickets when I was in elementary school, and <laughs> then my dad like gave me a bunch of his CDs, and you know, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, uh, Bob Dylan, even you know, just lots of lots of old stuff like that. Kind of was what made me want to play guitar, and then just kind of went from there. My my dad also raised me on classic rock. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. It's a good good intro. That's a pretty typical story, I think. With, yeah. Uh, you know, the white dads. <laughs> it uh, can be, yeah. Either that or, like, I feel like, yeah, dad brought you up on classic rock or you skateboarded and learned about music that way, right? <laughs> like, I mean, there's tons of cliches as far as yeah. I go. I think the dad rock upbringing definitely is, uh, is a staple. I always liked classic rock a lot more than my dad growing up, actually. <laughs> yeah. He, like, he always liked, like, Radiohead and the National and these like you know mature like. He has very refined taste. <laughs> yeah. And I was like Queen. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. So I uh, my both my parents uh, were not really uh, musicians. Uh, they played a little bit. My mom sang a little bit, uh, but it, they were not really really um, really into it. And but they were both they both loved music. So we always have really good music in the house. And my brother uh, picked up the guitar. Um, when I was really little, so he was playing, and then I wanted to do something, so my parents bought me a drum set, and uh, yeah, from then on, we, we pretty much just bounced inspiration inspiration off of each other, uh, and just kind of grew that like musical bond, but also like uh, really strongly in like other directions. Uh, yeah. N- Nick and his brother are really good jazz fusion players. They're in a band together outside of this called Honey. That's awesome. That's rad. I always tried to get my brothers to play music with me and they never like <laughs> it never it never worked. Are you a drummer? I see a kit behind you. I am. I'm gonna get to their like guitars and basses and keyboards on the floor and a little bit of everything. I used to have a studio as well, so Very nice. Awesome. Yeah. How did uh laundry start? Ooh, who's gonna tell it this time? <laughs> okay. okay. Um, <laughs> so you guys want to. No, it's cool, go for it. Okay. So I got some water by you. All right. <clears throat> So we uh, we all joined this like musical community uh, for freshmen at the UO um, in the in a dorm called Spiller on campus, and basically there was like a jam room, uh, and that was like the the special thing about about that dorm is there was like a space for all these musicians to get together and like just jam and ba- bounce like creative ideas off of each other, and so the very first day, uh, you know, there was like. 25 guitar players, like a few bass players, a few drummers. We all, they all got together in this, uh, in this little like area downstairs in the basement. And there was like, you know, we just jammed for like six or seven hours. And then it was, you know, it ended up being like two or three in the morning and they had to like this out. And so the only other room that us and a few other stragglers, uh, could go to was the laundry room. And eventually it was just the four of us just jamming and, and hanging out. And that, that's kind of how we knew it was just like, we, we were the last ones standing and we just kept, kept, kept playing. And, and we were like, this is the, the chemistry is great. We gotta, we gotta do something about this. That's how it all went down. That's kind of how it started. How we shot yeah. our dedication to each other. That's awesome. That's rad. Like supernatural. Another part of the story that I don't usually tell, but I think is interesting is I like, cause coming out of high school, I was pretty like socially anxious and stuff. And also it's definitely intimidating, like going into a space with a lot of mostly men and stuff and like being like, I play guitar, but I like, I remember I like heard people jamming downstairs and I like walked out of my room and then walked back inside, I think like 10 times before I was like, okay, no, I'm going to go down there. Like I almost didn't. <laughs> that would have been different. Would have been different. That's awesome. I did it. I did it. Yeah. How did how did that you pick that name laundry? <laughs> well, it's the laundry room. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so we like had some ideas floating around that were like laundry themed. Um, some that didn't make the cut was like tumble dry or like <laughs> laundry room lounge or something like that. And then eventually, I think we were just like walking around on campus one day, and Cal was like, "Let's just name the group laundry," and so we did. And, At that uh, point, too, we didn't have like super high aspirations of like. <laughs> going on giant tours and like all the stuff like we really just wanted to like put out a demo and like be able to play these cool house shows in our community where we could like just meet like other people that went to the university and hang out with them so like 
We didn't like, put, like, we wanted to like be friends with the other bands and just like sort of get in. Yeah, we <laughs> thought that we thought they were cool and we wanted to hang out with them. And it wasn't like I don't know. We didn't put like a ton of thought into it at the time, but for instance, know. we did not check to see if there was already a couple of Spotify's on lawn, or laundries on Spotify. We did. <laughs> I checked. Well, there. Oh, you did. Uh, yes. There turned out to be a couple more laundries. <laughs> I think at that point we were like, ah, who cares? Or yeah. At least I was. I don't yeah. know. But no, we've we've beaten them out now, so it's okay. Yeah. Fuck the other laundries. <laughs> <laughs> and the champion laundry <laughs> we wanted to like start internet beef with them or i i, I wanted to yeah. and no one else, and I, you know no i don't know about that. starting beef but one of the other laundries uh is the side project of the drummer of primus's oh yeah uh that's tim alexander yeah, yeah. i kind of just i would love to just talk with the guy someday just you know share laundry stories when we first came out with our first ep um just like a really rough like thing we threw together freshman year uh we put it on spotify and it cropped up on their page as a new release (laughs) so yeah yeah. they hadn't released music since like 2001 or something like that you're like what Did you guys have a specific uh, like sound or like bands that were influencing you early on that really like focused your sound in a certain direction? Well, early on, our sound was very unfocused. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, very unfocused sound. Um, and I think that you know we all have very distinct influences, uh, mm-hmm. and we still do. And maybe we've uh, we, there's been more and more things that have been overlapping in a few in the past few years that kind of feel like makes our sound a little more cohesive. But at the very beginning, like we were just like as far away from each other as we could be. Well, that's not, maybe that's not true. Um, we were we were really throwing stuff at the wall, I yeah. think, collectively. And also a big part of it was Kiki was uh, writing songs, but not for Laundry yet. Um, so she was just playing guitar on our stuff. And like, you know, obviously the last few albums, all four of us are writing music and it's yeah. a collaborative thing. But uh, yeah, that first year, it was just sort of like me and Riley had some little yeah, I was like, I'm chord not progressions. My songs. We were like, yeah, you guys play some little doodly doos on this and uh yeah i'll say some stuff and then uh, put it on an album (laughs) and i think um we just started playing we somehow just got a lot of gigs and we got to be really good friends and i like we were very happy obviously kiki started letting us play her songs too and like those are i think like a lot of our fans their favorite laundry song is a kiki song for example Yeah. yeah I mean, in those days, too, we were, like, calling ourselves a funk punk band, and I don't think either of those terms are accurate. Early, early laundry anymore. is just a whole different thing. It's just a whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Well, was there something you, when you settled on something, was there a direction or, like, specific influences? Because to me, it's very reminiscent of, like, what was happening in indie rock in, like, 2000, 2001, 2000, All like, the before. early 2000s. And, like, so it, it, it feels old school to me and I mean, you guys are a bit younger than i am so um yeah like the strokes kind of era yeah or even bands like early mart the early shin stuff um oh, yeah. yeah favorite band in high school for me also i think we all like vampire weekend mm-hmm. and we get compared to them just like yeah those sort of because it's inherently a little bit you know uh weird to be playing guitar music in our lord's year 2021 yeah <laughs> so yes i think it makes sense because like we got to pull from somewhere and that's like the last big sort of rock scene and in a certain way we don't even really want to like we're, we're trying to god i don't want to sound pretentious but like guitar music is like so done we're trying to like make new sounds with them and stuff i don't know if i totally am on <laughs> it. So done. there's just a lot there's a lot of guitar music out there Right. Yeah, I mean, here's what I would say is just like, you know, I'm not like trying to be out here like, let's revitalize the genre of guitar rock. But like, at the <laughs> same time, like, I do, I like how long we've spent sort of sticking to our roots. And this album that we just put out, to me feels like, 
the pinnacle of just like what we've sort of wanted to make as a four piece rock band with our guitars, bass, drums, harmony sort of setup. And I love the album so much, but I think after this, we're kind of looking to expand a little bit. It seems like, you know, I've, I just bought a keyboard and I'm kind of wanting to throw that in the mix in the next album. And I, you know, we're always experimenting a little bit, yeah. but trying to like, not just be, uh, at the same time, like we don't, want to just be so experimental that we're like careless you know i think a big part of what we've been liking to do with this one especially and on riley's end is uh using just his guitar and pedals to like make noises that you wouldn't necessarily associate with a guitar has yeah. become a decent and very fun part of this last album sound i think yeah it's funny too because like growing up i was always like the anti-pedal guy i was like oh that's <laughs> like Guitar pedals are stupid. You, if you can see his pedal. <laughs> <if it, laughs> you can just plug your guitar into your amp. And, like, I've gone completely in the opposite direction nowadays. But I don't know. I mean, you grow up and your tastes change. Yeah. And you want to do different things and you get tired of, like, you can only play the same three, four chords so many different ways before you're just like, how can I play this chord but make it sound different? Right. <laughs> like, sure. especially if you're writing for a long time and, and have a long career. So it makes mm -hmm. sense. I, I want to get to kind of the sound on the new record and the change, but I'm curious, you guys put out a little record in 2020. Was that always planned that you were going to release music in 2020 or? Yes, it was not planned. Terrible timing. Cause we had to <laughs> pull a national tour for that album. Oh shit. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we we're going to sort of debut some songs from it at tree fort over a year ago. And that got canceled, of course, but now mm -hmm. we'll be debuting some songs at tree fort this year for our next album. Yeah. So. That's a lot of stuff that was going to happen last year. It just got pushed this year, but, uh, yeah, we were really sad that we couldn't tour it because we, we love that album. You know, we wanted to, we wanted to a lot of songs on there. We've only played live like four or five times in like the month before pandemic happened, you know? Oh, man. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, you know, we got to spend so much more time practicing the record that's about to come out uh, just because we, we weren't gigging as much, you know, we like, and we'd sort of hit this point before the pandemic too, where we had sort of always had this policy of just like, we'll take all the gigs we can get. And I think that um, that started to wear on us all for, you know, slightly different reasons, just like, um, like whether it was just like straining our academics or straining our, our bodies or uh, just like all kinds of things, it was sort of time to reevaluate. And I think it kind of made us realize like we don't necessarily need to be playing bars on Monday nights anymore. Right. So, so um, you know, so that, that's definitely things we've taken from this like momentary lapse in live performances. Yeah. Did you ever think about holding off and not releasing that record? Well, it was too late. It was too late. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And it was like, it came out April 20th and we found out about everything like the end of March. March so yeah. it was just like, yeah, it, yeah, you know, it was all slated for release and everything. Yeah. Pretty brutal. <laughs> pretty and brutal timing. Honestly, I'm glad we didn't wait because like yeah. what we still be sitting on it now. Like that doesn't yeah, you gotta yeah. just do it eventually. Yeah. And the world needed music, you know, that, yeah, that. yeah we yeah. had a hell of a fun month playing shows just around Eugene and Portland when that album came out, playing the new songs. But uh, yeah, it's life. Yes, it's life was cut short. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys do any live streams or any like taking to the internet to try to keep yourselves relevant and I, I, out we there? Like them if they were, we like to do them if they were like fundraisers or oh. if it paid us a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Went one or the other on the end of the spectrum, you know? But uh, yeah, like Nick said, after a few of them, we were just like, oh, these are depressing. Yeah, they were really just, uh, it, was, it was not right. It didn't feel, feel it didn't, like. It didn't feel good. It didn't feel like how playing music in front of people should feel. You know? Yeah. And not to be like, because I respect the idea of them, and I know some people enjoyed them a lot, but I, my favorite bands in the world and like my bestest friends, I would never be find myself watching their live streams and like, you know, I just don't know really who it's for because you don't, you know. Yeah, like I'm not going to orient my whole day around logging onto a Facebook live stream. At yeah. <laughs> like just a lot to ask, you know, for like, it's just not the same experience as going to a concert and like socializing, having fun. When, so. when I was watching like my friend's bands do live streams, I would just be like, I would feel bad for the band because I was like, oh, you guys have so many fans. Like this doesn't represent that, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, shit. 
that's that's us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think no one thinks it was the best thing to do, but you know. Yeah. Every, everyone had to I choose their own path. Music videos this year instead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. At what point did you decide to to start writing new material? We do it pretty much immediately. Immediately. Like, yeah, it's it's just sort of the way the cycle goes. It's um. It's fast. I mean, for me, it's a little bit overwhelming. I always have like a, I have I write in sort of like manic bursts, and then I have like a slump where I'm just not creative for many months and I'm like I'm never going to write a song again um but usually it works out but yeah like these guys are just like always like all right we're finished let's get back to work and I'm like I need to find some material <laughs> <laughs> I don't know we don't we never really give it a rest to be honest like we're, we're usually doing something yeah we're always somewhere in the album release cycle you know like it's kind of seems like right after we put out an album or no, sorry, right after we're done recording an album, we're working on new material. Sometimes we already have started, honestly. Yeah. 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 Well, usually we have, yeah. yeah. Was there ever a thought not to do an album and just like release singles or EPs or in shorter bursts to get music out there quicker? Or was it always like, if we can wait and time this correctly and like we could tour when this comes out? <laughs> We're, we're so into releasing singles for an album nowadays because we think it's like, as Cal likes to put it, you get you get more content bombs, you know? You get to like be like, hey, we're putting something out, we're putting something out. But at the end of the day, we're still believers in the album. Like, we yeah. like the... If it were up to me, which it's not, and obviously I think we're making the right choice, you know, like, business-wise, I would rather just release an album, maybe release one single, single before. Like, it's... Mm -hmm. I just am an album guy, like... I like albums. I like I like their format. I like the way they say something. Like with a lot of songs at a time, I like being able to listen to them all the way through. Mm -hmm. Like I get so exhausted by like the release five singles yeah. and then release the like the rest of the other album. It's like two more songs. Yeah, it's like, yeah. we're we're old fashioned. We're a four piece guitar band, and we like to release albums. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it it works. There's something there for everybody. Um, um, I think we all sort of like our music. We write songs you know, all by ourselves and some of them in a group and we collaborate and they do wind up, I think, especially the last two years, coalescing into packages of like, you know, seven to 10 songs that make sense with each other. So in that way, I think we're probably not going to ever stop doing albums. Even, even if it's true, we like to maybe sh like play the business a little bit and yeah, release music more often. Cause that's what uh, that's what the internet likes, you know. You stay on the A list, movie star. You carry a nation's weight, but the board of directors of the studio determines your fate. So there's a song on the album. The first song is called Movie Star. And it it's not that deep, but it's, you know. And then there's some other sort of movie star themes sprinkled around. Um, like one of the songs is, I think, sort of loosely based on um, Judy Garland. Um, and I don't know. It just, it was, I think a lot of it is just sort of like a, it is like, like, I think it's the biggest motif in the album, but it also just, like, when we're coming up with album names, it's mostly just about, like, how it rolls off the tongue, like, phonetically, like, how it sounds, you know? Um, Movie Star is kind of, like, a cute, snappy title. I think it's really glamorous and sexy as an album title, and I really like it. Yeah, I guess we were also sort of just, uh, when we're honing in on, like, okay, we've got all these songs, what's, like, the visual aesthetic that we see that sort of, like, pairs with it? Mm -hmm. I think like this sort of like old timey Hollywood look is just what we were sort of all, sort of all agreeing that we saw like with it, you know, because we go, you know, we're getting merch printed, we're getting 
album art done. We're getting movies or sorry, <laughs> music <laughs> videos made. So it's like, what, like, what do we want this all to be centered around? That's going to reflect the songs. So, I think it also has yeah. a lot to do with the fact that this last year we just watched so many movies and TV right? <laughs> songs. Most of the songs on the album, not don't you dare so much, but most of the songs on the album are about TV being in kind. movies or TV shows or watching movies or TV shows or yeah. some variation of that. And I think that's sort of where our heads were at. We just absorbed a lot of content this year. We spent a lot of time inside. <laughs> So I'm curious, like you talked about changing sounds and wanting to, to reinvent yourself. Both the first two singles are a little more chill. Um, like there seems to be more shoegaze influence, a little more dream pop, uh, a lot more space in the music. Is that a theme that continues throughout the record or just like this single that you wanted to showcase something different in your sound? I think, I think that is accurate, yes. <laughs> what part? I think that does describe more or less the rest of the album compared to the last album. We use really, um, we, we got in the studio and me and Nick, and everyone really liked the, the idea and the sound of like really dead and dry bass and drums rhythm section. I think that opened up a lot of space in this album um, for just like, you know, Kiki doing like little like high melodies, Riley doing like, uh, you know, whale sounds on his guitar. There was just a lot of space Nick and I tried to be, we had a, just compared to the last album, especially, which had like a pretty lively, um, you know, recording for the rhythm section, it's just tried to be very dead. Yep. Yeah. Just around. What's what's the future hold for after this record? Is are you hoping to tour, or is it just are you in wait and see mode? And yeah, we yeah, go ahead. Sorry, we got a. Sorry, I'm just jumping in because I'm the I'm the tour guy here. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, we we got a tour booked um, for mid September. We're just gonna do a run from here in Oregon. Uh, gonna start in Portland, run our way down to San Diego, and then. Uh, and then we're coming back from San Diego, 17th of September, playing our album release on the 18th of September, and then heading off to Boise for Tree Fort. So, yeah, we're doing a little tour. You know, it's not the national tour we had planned for Fast Cars, but uh, we've been having some vehicle troubles lately that oh, we're sorting man. out. So, <laughs> for this tour, we're going to get uh, drums backlined for for our whole tour so that we can we don't have to travel with them because that makes yeah. it less gear. So. Hoping to get like a box to put on top of uh, Cal's parents' car, and that's how we're that's how we're rolling this time. <laughs> Style. National Brad. tour next summer. Yes. If, if, if we can swing it. If there's not uh, Rona two. Thanks for listening to As the Story Grows. Our intro music was written and composed by Jeremy Hunt. The As the Story Grows theme is by Bob Nana. If you like what you hear, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and give us a rating and review. If you'd like to support the show financially, you can join us at patreon.com slash as the story grows. Be a part of our community and join the ongoing conversation over on Discord. If you enjoy this episode, share it on social media with your friends. Much appreciated, and thanks for listening. I never felt so young and alive as when I'm diving into a tomb. And now I'm learning as I listen along, and the wheels are turning, and I started a song. One good word, and I'm gone. Oh, as the story. Oh
Come on.